Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Page the Stage Actual Plays. Uh, I'm, I'm your GM for tonight. My name is Jonathan, and we are playing Cyberpunk Red. Um, so interesting thing that we're doing tonight is we're actually using a scenario from the Jumpstart Kit. Um, if you know anything about Cyberpunk, the Jumpstart Kit came out before the core rulebook. So we're going to use a scenario from that Jumpstart Kit, kit called The Apartment. But we're actually going to be playing with the core uh, the core rules tonight. So um, all of us here are first time uh, Cyberpunk Red players, including a first time GM. And um, so basically have fun, watch us uh, learn the game, experiment with the game. And if you're trying to learn this game, uh, hopefully you've come to the right place. So, but we'll open up on the scene here for uh, this, uh, this short scenario called um, The Apartment. So the year is 2045. It is uh, called uh, The Time of the Red. Uh, we are in Night City, which is somewhere on the coast of California between uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles. And uh, we open up at a um, somewhere really near to what's called the combat zone. Um, it's called Little China, and we are a little ways up uh, north from there um, in, the, um, in the upper marina. And uh, we, uh, the scene kind of unfolds onto this uh, small little apartment building. It's only three stories, uh, three stories high. Um, it's a it's 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 a normal night. It's raining. The ra the rain has like a red tinge to it um, because uh, this time is known as the time of the red with all the different wars that have gone on um, um, in the past few years. Um, it's not uncommon in this area to hear sirens, um, shootings, uh, being so close to an area that is uh, uh, you know that is really unsafe. But we have uh, some people that live that live in um, reasonable safety in this um, in this apartment building. So we're scanning to uh, we're scanning to the third floor. Um, there's eight rooms on this floor, and uh, in apartment three A um, is. Uh, and why don't you introduce yourself, Seth? Hey guys, I'm Seth. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at sonofjohan81, and uh, we're playing here Cyberpunk Red. <laughs> So, give an intro to my character too. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> opening up on apartment three A, we see a um, we see a person that's uh, surrounded by. Um, it looks like he's taking apart a computer um, or uh, some type of uh, some type of uh, some type of gadget. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about White Rabbit, Seth. Yeah. So my character is White Rabbit. He's a, a net runner, and uh, his apartment is. Um, basically, become his personal computer. Uh, like you said, he has his computer parts everywhere. Um, he, uh, he, he grew up in the UK, but he um, is now um, living in Night City. And um, when he was young, his family was killed by uh, sort of collateral damage uh, in some of the corporate wars, and they were killed by Militech. So he has uh, a little bit of a, an ax to grind with them. And um, he has, uh, he has a, an input, uh, a girlfriend that he, that he hangs out with. Uh, named Lily Petal, and that's kind of his one and only friend. And she sometimes helps him with some of his jobs and sort of, um, you know, intel and things like that. Excellent. And so, living next door to White Rabbit in apartment three uh, B um, is uh, Mako. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, oh. Steve? All right. Uh, my name is Steve. I am playing Mako. Um, uh, or Mako. Uh, I prefer to go by Mako, but uh, people decide what they want to call me. Uh, I'm sort of a jack of all trades uh, with technology. I'm like the Tony Stark without any power or money. Um, in his past life, he was working on an AI that was going to be both a psychological robot to do psychoanalyst, um, as well as a, uh, a self-pleasure type of robot. They were going to find the perfect uh, Ma uh, Mako and his partner were trying to make the perfect uh, AI partner. Um, but when she disappeared mysteriously, he had to uh, make money and start over. So he got into cyberware implants, and now he works with fixers all over the city um, doing cyberware. Awesome. And so we'll go down to the other side of the um, of the apartment hallway. So there is an elevator that basically in a stairwell that separates four rooms to the right and four rooms to the left. And so we will go to room um 3C, and that's where we find um, Argus Black. Trevor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Trevor. I'm going to be playing a nomad named Argus Black. Argus has grown up uh, kind of here and there, and, uh, well, as the name implies, is nomadic. So um, his family has worked moving things in and out of large metropolitan areas, 
um, and procuring items that maybe are not the easiest to procure. So he's hoping to keep on doing that and maybe get a little bit of a foothold here in the city. Awesome. And then next door to Argus Black is uh, K or Kanaloa. Adam, go ahead and introduce your character. Uh, so I'm Adam Elwer. My handle is uh, at Darth Elwer uh, on Twitter. And uh, Kanaloa is a, um, he's a fixer. He's someone who goes around and he makes the deals and fixes the problems and makes things happen. And so uh, if you're looking for something or you need something, um, I probably know someone who has it, or I have some of it in my uh, apartment, my little tiny apartment that looks more like a uh, warehouse slash uh, um whatever you want a storage room uh than it does a an actual apartment and so um he's from a drift nation which uh these nations that uh, exist out at sea and just kind of wander around and try to uh find resources uh out there and so um he's here uh trying to make ends meet awesome so um at this time of day it's uh um it's a friday night um, you, you guys are used to uh, working your jobs uh, throughout the week, and uh, usually Friday nights, uh, your um, the third floor has kind of a tradition. They like to meet up on top of the roof because you are um, your floor just is a short little walk up the up the stairwell by the elevator to get up to the roof, which gives you a really good view of Night City. Um, for all of all of the horrible kind of uh, things that happen in Night City at nighttime, right when that sun sets and that those red hues are, are basically shine throughout the city and off of and um, reflecting off all of the skyscrapers, it's beautiful. And your apartment actually has a really good view of that. Um, and so um, the the other residents on the third floor are just uh, um, they're just about to about to wind up their day. And so next door to um, um, to Mako, you have a um, a neighbor who you know has uh, three. Uh, she has three pets. She has a um, she has a cockatoo na um, named Rico, and you know this because you've met her before. And she she likes to talk about her pets. And um, in fact, you know not to even call them pets. They're her they're her roommates. And uh, also um, next to um, next to UK is a um, is a rocker boy named Rico. Even though they have the same name as the as the cockatoo, the names aren't they're not meant to be related, and uh, you often hear him practicing throughout the day. But it's about at this time of the day that the, that, that your neighbors basically stop what they're doing and they um, you meet them on the roof basically to have a um, have some time either together or to relax, but really to catch those views. And so um, it's at that time that um, we're going to open up this scenario as you make your way to the rooftop. So on the rooftop, you see. What kind of night are we looking at? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no. So what kind of night are we looking at tonight? Yeah. So that the the, um, the night looks uh, um, looks heavy with clouds, and the clouds are never really gray. They're always like a crimson red, and it looks like a, it's, it's, uh, there's probably going to be some rain in the future. Um, you notice that when you get up to the top of the roof, uh, all four of you, um, that you have Gina is up there. Gina is your neighbor, um, Mac over the one with the pets. Um, Rico's not there yet. He's still um, he's still recording music, but you uh, there is a group of five uh, young people, um, and you just know them as the Andersons, and they are already getting the evening started. They're already they're already uh, cracking open cans of Smash, and they're already um, sipping sipping back. So. Uh, would you like to uh, would you like to talk to your neighbors? Are you guys just gonna enjoy the uh, the scenery? What's up, Andersons? Uh, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice to see you, Argus. Um, and this this is the oldest one. She looks. You know her to be. Mo her name is Molly, but she's only um, she's only twenty five years old. And she's like, yeah. So uh, you bring us any fruit, Argus? Did you find anything? What do you got for me? Oh, I got some cans of Smash for you. You want some cans of Smash? Yeah, what do you need? What kind of fruit? Well, I mean, uh, um, do you got any of those strawberries? I mean, we're looking for those strawberries. Um, I mean, I know we can find those synthetic kind that we've seen in the past, but we're, you know, uh, 
We're looking for some small, you know, some some real ones for uh, Craig over here. And she points to one of the other ones, and you can see that the even though Molly's the oldest, uh, um, the the other ones are um, they're younger, but they all seem to be like a family of some sort. Um, and you know them to be not related, but they call themselves a family. Tell you what, like I don't have strawberries on me today. That's not really how this works. It's tough to keep fresh produce on me since it, you know, it, it goes bad. Um, what I can give you is some broccoli. Well, I mean, as long as it's green and it's fresh, I mean, uh, I, I've only tasted one thing green and fresh in my whole entire life. Um, so, I mean, I'll take whatever you got. Uh, you want a can of Smash? Sounds good to me. All right, so she trades you a, she trades you a can of Smash. Um, for this broccoli, and if you don't know what Smash is, it's basically the version of beer. But um, heads up, it is it is addictive. Nice, making making bad choices already. So as she hands you the the, um, um, the can of Smash, you can see across her knuckles, and it's and you know this from seeing the Andersons quite a few times. They have the word Anderson written across all of their knuckles on either side. Um, they call themselves a family, but they're very obviously a gang. Now they've never they've never caused you any trouble. Hmm. Are you gonna drink the smash? No, I'm I'm gonna pocket it. Okay. I'm gonna save it for later. Well, hey, uh, Argus, it's good smash. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, Molly wouldn't bring you no know, like smash is not good. It's good smash. No, 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 I, I believe you, Molly, just, you know, maybe later. And then uh, the, um, to uh, Mako, you have a, um, you have a older woman walk up to you. She has a, uh, she has a cockatoo on her shoulder. And then, um, and she says, uh, um, she says, you would say, well, what do you think? It's a beautiful night outside, don't you think? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Rico. Uh, how, how are you today? I'm gonna like, try to pet the tr pet pet the the cockatoo. So he kind of backs up and then he walks across her back to the, his other shoulder. Goes, yeah, yeah. I you know he doesn't really like to be petted. I, um, I mean, I'm always gonna try. Yeah, I keep telling you, if you can get uh, you can get Argus over there to get you some carrots. He likes carrots, but I haven't seen a carrot in 20 years. Yeah, I I, I don't even think I taste the carrot so i'm not sure uh i i can talk to argus if, if it's that important but uh I'll, I'll just i'll just talk to rico from here um if that's okay yeah sure you can talk to you can talk to my bird um what you notice uh, uh what you notice Mako, about these about these uh about these pets of hers her roommates is they are real animals and what's strange about that is uh, the only only animals are basically uh, bioengineered by a company called Biotechnica, but her animals are actually legit real. And that's something that okay. You, and this is something I know. This is something you know from living next to her and meeting her animals. Okay. Is they they are they are real animals. Um, just uh, c c curious. How do you uh, keep? A creature like that alive with uh you, you know the diets that we have here available to us well i usually have to i usually have to get rex to get us uh i usually have to get rex to, to find us some food every once in a while food in their diet um when she says rex you guys all know that rex is your uh he's your local fixer he's the fixer of the neighborhood that basically keeps uh that you pay monthly to keep the gangs away from trying to take over this apartment um, probably a good time to describe how important this apartment is. This apartment is close to what's known as the combat zone. Um, to have something so close uh, to the combat zone is dangerous, but also coveted because um, being in your guys' line of work, uh, it's easy to make money in dangerous situations out here in the center of town. And so lots of people want to live out here. Some people desperately want to get away from here. And you guys are right at that right distance where you could safely get away from the combat zone, but also kind of experiment in that life as well. And so having a place uh, a place to call home and a roof over your head and running water is um, um, is a bit special in this environment. Um, the only issue is that, yeah, there are, you know, 
people want to take that away from you. And so that's why you pay Rex, the fixer, to try to work those deals out. Um, Kay, you you know uh, you know Rex just by his reputation. Um, it I, I'll leave it up to you to tell me if you're envious of him because right now at this stage in your career you don't have as high of a reputation as he does. But um, I mean, hey, hey, we all want to be Rex, right? I mean, he's got the stuff, he's got the connections. We all want to be him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, you guys uh, haven't met Rex and. Um, you do know that uh, Rex does keep a solo employed that also protects your apartment complex. He lives on the second floor. Um, you know him, uh, his name is uh, Grant Young, but J-U-N-G. And uh, he's not here at the moment, he's out, on a, he's out on a job, but even just mentioning Grant's name kind of keeps some of the gangs away from this apartment as well. Um, the only neighbor that's on the third floor that um, you haven't um, that isn't coming up to the, the top to kind of be with you is uh, is Dr. Carver. And Dr. Carver normally sleeps all throughout the day because uh, he works on the trauma teams. And so he, uh, um, he he sometimes pulls double duty and right now he's currently asleep. But uh, your, um, your rocker boy neighbor, uh, Rico, he does kind of climb up the steps. He's all sweaty. He just finished a, a, um, he just finished a drum session um, and he walks up and he's like, Molly, Molly, come on. Uh, give me some of that smash, man. I mean, I really need that right now. And he's just like, he's just sweaty. Um, he has a bright pink mohawk that runs from um, up and down, the, up, up and down right in the center of his hair. Um, he's wearing a tank top and he's wearing like, um, um, he's wearing leather pants. And uh, he has uh, he has a nose piercings in both, uh, in both noses and he, on both sides of his nose. And he also has large earrings as he walks over to Molly. Molly just, uh, um, Links in that can of smash, and she says to him, "She's like, well, you always, uh, you told me you're gonna give me that that shout out on your new on your new record. We haven't heard you, we haven't heard it yet. So that that smash doesn't come free, Rico." And so they kind of chit chat. Um, they kind of chit chat about kind of you know, making a deal for that smash, remove some notoriety for the Andersons. So, um, but White Rabbit, uh, you see, um, as you're kind of staring out at this sunset, you see across the street. There is a um, there's a there's a black car that's been parked out there, and you've noticed it's been parked out there most of the day. Um, as you are now up on top of the roof, you see that um, there are two um, two basically armored individuals. Uh, very clearly, they have the Militech logo on their um, on their on their chest, and there's a man that is uh, that's standing in front of them. That's uh, he seems to be drawing on an easel, and he has cameras that are attached to his body that are like taking pictures of the um, of of basically of of this whole apartment complex. So the way the apartment works is like you have you have the entrance, but the the length of the apartment extends backwards into an alleyway behind you. So it's uh, it's skinny in the front, long in the back, and so let's say uh, I would say uh, White Rabbit, you notice that as you everyone else is kind of talking. And um, but right, just right, well, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, I'll walk over to Rex and I'll say, uh, oh, Rex, um, have you seen uh, those mic, those uh, those gonks over there? So you're walking, you're talking. So Rex is the fixer. He's uh, he's not with you guys right now. He's uh, he's just oh, he's not. He's uh, your known fit. Yeah, with you are the Andersons. Uh, Rico just joined you, and um, also. Um, Gina Zapata is also there, and she's uh, your neighbor with the pets. Then I'll probably talk to these guys. Uh, I'll go up to, um, I'll say Mako. I'll be like, oh, hey, Mako. Spot, those, spot those gonks over there? What, where? What, wait, who? Oh, I'm gonna try to take a look. Oh, the black car down there. Oh, wait. What, what does that guy, what, what does that guy got on him? Oh. I don't know, maybe he's a kind of a, a media or something. He's got cameras all around that easel. Maybe he's an, an artist, I, I don't know. I, I, I've, never, I've never seen anybody like that, like that here before. Um, uh, uh, Argus, uh, come here for a second. Yeah, what, what's up? Uh, uh, White Rabbit found something. You should, you should check it out. Oh, talking about across the street there? I mean, uh, that's, they're not ever here. Why are they here? I don't know. I've never seen them. The black, 
Because my car's been there all day. We, we, I mean, we should take, we should take a look, right? I mean, uh, no one's here to, to do that, are they? Uh, I don't know. I think, what are you, hey, what are you guys looking at over there? What's so interesting? Come on, guy. Check this out. Oh, that's, uh, hmm. How long they been there? All day, mate. Uh, anybody call Rex? Yeah, it was my first thought, too. I said, I'm, it's the first time I've, I've seen it, so, um, I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Rex on my, um, internal thingy. <laughs> Your agent? <laughs> yeah, my agent, thank you. Okay. Um, See if he picks up. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Do we want to do that? I'm, I'm fairly new to the complex here. I, I don't want them to see us as uh, people who can't handle their own things. I mean, do we want to run to Rex first? Hey, man, I just, I just want to see if he knows anything before we, uh, before we go and approach him. That's what I'm wondering too. <laughs> Maybe he knows. Okay, so you calling, uh, you calling Rex? His agent? Yeah, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Rex. Okay. Um, so it, ring, uh, it rings a few times, and then um, a voice picks up and says, uh, "This is uh, Lucille, Rex's agent. Rex cannot be reached right now. Go ahead and leave a message, or you can tell me what you would like to reach him about. And at my early inconvenience, I will let him know." I'm just gonna hang up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't, he ain't answering. <laughs> John, what are the military guys doing? Are they like, do they seem to be guarding this guy? They or see, yeah, are they they're keeping an eye out. They're standing on either side of him, um, either side of him as he's doing his work with taking pictures and drawing. And uh, they're just uh, they they have uh, they have dark shades on, and they are just uh, basically standing put. And is my sense that this is a media guy or an artist or like what what you said? There's an easel. Is he drawing something? Uh, yeah, you can't see what he's drawing because he's uh, he's on the other side of the easel. But it looks like he's he's doing he's doing something on the easel. And he's also taking pictures. I wonder what the Andersons would think about this. They might have a an interest in staying private. So it's a uh, it's a uh, um, yeah, it's great you asked that because then right then Molly goes, uh, oh oh oh, hey hey, it's almost time. It's almost five thirty. Nova's coming on. And so she pulls out her agent. She turns up the sound on it, and the the other uh, young Andersons kind of gather around, and they um, and then they just say to themselves, you hear them mumbling, saying something like, "Yeah, you know, we got to keep track of what these corpos are doing." Nova's great. Nova's great. And so this is what she plays out of her agent. And now here's Nova, Corporation. Coming to you from the upper marina, bringing you the latest news about what the corps are up to. Can you believe that World Sad has the guts to set up towers so close to the combat zone? They're crazy. But I have my sources and they tell me that they're putting up communication towers anywhere they can find the space. And they ain't asking permission if you know what I mean. I guess they're getting tired of poor signals to their satellites outside of Beaverville. I'm sure this is good news for some of you Jumbatas. With those world sat towers around, if you get plugged in Little China and are about to flatline, your agent will have plenty of signal to call in the trauma team. And <laughs> the corpos are coming back, my friends. Love them or hate them. You gotta love these fast download speeds. <laughs> Until next time, Chumbatas, this is Nova signing off. And so Molly's like just saying to her, her family, she's like... And those bastards, corporations. I mean, but really, though, and she holds up her agent. She's like, this is a new one. And I can I can download media in like two seconds flat. It's amazing. And so they go back and they seem to be playing some type of game between them on their um, on their phones as they continue to basically pound uh, cans of smash. Um, so, yeah. Wait, are those guys putting up communication? towers here is that like are they surveying do you think who are you asking um maka okay and white rabbit okay your party 
I mean, well, it, it could be, I guess, but that's a lot of heat down there for, for some guy looking around for a tower. You're uh, muted, White Raven. I'm sure there's some parties out there that don't want to be spotted. I mean, maybe we should go down there and talk to them. Uh, I'm gonna. Mako's gonna look over at White Rabbit. Um, I don't. I don't know if you uh, heard, but they're talking about communication towers. Um, I mean, do we think that this is the beginning of one, or? Well, it could be, right? We like then, that. Uh, do we care? Um, all of a sudden, Mako's eyes, um, his eye irises was first uh, shown his cyberware um, turned to a lavender, <laughs> um, and uh, that's there's a different um demeanor over him and he go and he looks over at you white rabbit with a like a sly grin and be like i mean i think argus uh has a plan we can go down there at least talk and check things out and maybe you can plug in and see what you can find we yeah. could make a lot of money off this if we could somehow build a back door and uh piggyback off some of this communication i can think it might Bye. and my eyes just go back to normal and his demeanor kind of shrinks down a little bit has White, Rab has White Rabbit ever seen that, like, expression on your face before? Is that normal? Uh, yeah, this is uh, when he's working. Like, when he's, when tech is in his eyes, um, he, he, that's his, like, the only thing that kind of brings him out of that, like... It's tell. Yeah, it's his tell. Thank you. Thank you. It's his tell. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, he's, but he's just starting to get antsy a little bit. All right, well, I mean, that sounds like a great plan. Um, let's... Well, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to just talk to them straight up? Or do you want to create a distraction of some sort? I mean, hey, I, I can go down and give him some sweet talking. You know, <laughs> I think if all five of us go down there, he's going to, they're going to, they're going to bolt, man. They're going to be like, what's up? And they're going to, they're going to be stressed out. So I think, you know, hey, I'll go down there. I'll say some things. I'll talk to them and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. And like, you guys come around. No, the other side. Or what? What if the Andersons uh, help us out with those Militech guys, and uh, maybe we come around anyways? You just want to rob them? Well, I don't not want to rob them. Well, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, my, maybe the distraction is you guys uh, go ahead and talk into, and I can find a an access point, see if I can check in. I say we keep the Robin as the second option. Like, let's go down. Let's have a conversation. Even if they tell me to buzz off, it'll give you it'll give you a distraction. You know, White Rabbit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then maybe maybe we do have the Andersons. Um, uh, you know, just provide a distraction if things get a little hairy. Uh, I don't know. Cover from the roof, maybe. Hey, hey, Molly, Molly, come here. <clears throat> oh, what's up, Argus? Uh, who who were you guys talking about earlier when you were talking about um, corpos? The corpos, man, the corpos, the ones that uh, the, the run this whole place. I mean, I, they look? I mean, the, nowadays they say they're not as strong as they used to be, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. They're the ones with all the money. We don't have nothing. And you look at her, and she's dressed pretty much in rags. Do they look like that? And I kind of point down at the black car and the other tech guys. Oh, yeah, or I guess they look exactly like that. Look at that. Look at that corporal scum right there. And they the rest of them come up and they start uh the other uh Andersons. Uh they their their sign is they put their they put their fists together and they kind of like move back and forth as they as they spit and they start cussing at these uh at these people down below. And then the the yeah, the two uh, armed guards basically have they, re they don't react at all. Um, the man that's with the easel um, just seems to place up the cameras and start shooting them and shooting all down the building. Um, other than that, the Andersons don't seem to be having much effect on them. All right, Andersons, uh, can you guys be on standby? We're we're gonna see if we could talk to them, but you know, if things start getting a little weird. We might need you to just take their attention away from us for a little bit. Well, what's he doing? What's he doing right there? Look, look he's got a camera. Is that what he's doing? He's taking pictures of the camera. 
What's that? We don't know. He, or he might be watching you. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you watching me? Get them, boys. Come on. And they all turn over and they basically moon. <laughs> and they moon down the, the, the people below them. Uh, and you hear, uh, you hear look the around, everybody. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was go ahead. Just to say, I would look around at everybody and be like, this is probably a good time. Take some, some quiet steps backwards. <laughs> All right. So, so down there. That's, you guys are going downstairs? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so there's two ways to uh, get up and down um, your floors. There's an elevator, and then there's just there's a door to the left of uh, on each floor that is the stairwell, the access to the stairwell. The stairwell also goes to the roof as well. Um, you have to take the stairs down to get to the third floor if you want to catch the elevator. Um, but that's just to show you how the layout of the apartment um, is. But either way you choose, uh, you get down to the um, you get down to the bottom floor, and yeah, they, as you look, they are right across the street. When you walk out the um, the uh, front doors of this apartment, um, this apartment complex is not high end at all. Um, it's pretty beat up. Um, it's functional. It's not like um, there's a, when it rains, there's occasional leaks here and there. Um, but it's definitely seen better days if it had ever seen better days. And so that there is a he that that man's across the street with an easel in front of him, and the two Militech guards are just standing there. Um, they you look they look to each be holding. Um, um, you don't see the arms on them, but uh, any type of weapons on them. But it looks like they um, have their arms crossed, and they're just looking straight ahead. All right, I'm I'm gonna walk over to them, full of confidence, right. Hey, 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 guys! Rex sent me down to check in with you and see if there's anything that you guys need. Can I do something for you? Can I get something for you? I got some lemons. I got some some food rations. Rex just said, take care of you guys and let him know that, that you guys were going to be okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, go ahead. I'm lying. Do you want me to take a deception roll? <laughs> yeah, I was looking for. Uh, yeah, again, new players here, so I'm looking at the different skills that you have. If you if you have one that you know right off the bat, go ahead and do uh, that. Hold on, I'm looking. Sorry, I'm social looking at. Skills. I'm looking at the social skills. Probably conversation, but also um, persuasion. Okay, which go, one do you want me go to ahead, roll? Go ahead and do persuasion. You're trying to persuade okay. them that you're. Okay. Um, so the, the man behind the easel, just like, um, you, you don't see him cause he's like, the easel is like basically covers his whole body, but he's, you see him scribbling, but then you just see his head pop around. He's like, you got lemons? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I grow these dwarf lemons and, and they're there. Everybody likes them. I just have this, you know, little plant that I grow. He's like, you want to try one? And I'm going to hold out two of them to him. Um, Hey, they're little ones, they're little, they're little tiny dwarf lemons. <laughs> Are they real? Nice. No, they're fake. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, are they like, no? They're synthetic. Synthetic. They're synthetic. They're synthetic. Yes, okay. Yeah, of course, I don't have real lemons. Okay. But I'm were you trying? That. Were you trying to make him believe you had real lemons? Uh, I don't know. I just told him I had lemons. I okay. didn't tell him what gotcha. I had. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, I also told him I know Rex. So you know. <laughs> so uh, he says that he's like, well. Um, I don't know Rex, but uh, and he just motions to one of the security, um, like basically grab the lemons. And so one of the big one of the security guys who's uh, it's like six two, he comes over and with a gloved hand just grabs um, grabs the lemons out of your hand. Hand he has uh, you can tell he has Kevlar uh, Kevlar helmet as well as body gear. As he takes the lemons out of his hand, he looks at them and he just like uh, he gives kind of a shrug, almost like he doesn't care, and he hands them over to the band. So, so how's all this surveying going that you guys are doing out here? You guys almost done? You guys, you guys need anything? Um, no, 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 no. We're good here. And then the man that took the lemons from me says, "You can go on your way now." All right, all right. I'm just, just trying to see if you guys needed anything. Okay. So, Jonathan, while he's doing that, uh, I wanted to uh, scan to see if there's any access points. Okay. So the only close enough. Yeah, so there's yeah. no uh, the gear that he's using doesn't appear to be. Uh, um, well, go ahead and make the interface roll. Go ahead and make the interface roll with your, your D10. Uh, 
Can I do that from a character sheet? Yeah. You should be able to do it from the, the very the front sheet where your stats are. You have the roll yeah. ability down there. You should be able to click that one. Oh wait, that didn't do it. Yeah, um, it was it was probably your your interface, which is a four plus the D ten. So you probably rolled if you want to hover over it, you probably got a three. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah so the, uh, you even with that roll, you notice that you know that of the access points that you have inside the apartment. You know that the access points are um, right at the elevators, and there's also uh, there's, a, there's like a old satellite dish that's on the roof. That's an access point. Um, but other than that, outside, the only access point you could probably pick up would be his uh, his vehicle. But you would have so, to be you would, and uh, and that would just be because some cars are con you can control with interface plugs. And so his car is just one of those cars that you could if you basically you could drive hands free. So this might be a new question, but from the access point in the building, can I access any of like any of what they might be working with? No. So the way that works is okay. you, have, you have your own net architecture. That's that's your building. That's right. that has yeah, all that's your right. lights, your fire, your fire, um, your um, fire alarms and so forth. This architecture is just it's not really an architecture. It's actually just that, you know, his car is one of those cars that you could drive hands free if you interfaced with it, if you were driving it. That's about it. But the okay. he's standing in front of as well as the two uh, personal security. Um, Militech is a company that provides arms to people, um, provides protection. And so obviously this person seems to have hired their services. Um, I'm going to like kind of, as this is all happening, sort of like, like how do concealed weapons work? Do I need to ready concealed weapons in order to use them in an instant? Or is it just sort of assumed I can reach down if things start going south here? You can read. You can pull out your weapon in the, in, as a concealed weapon. You can pull it out on your turn. Okay, cool. I'm gonna walk up um, and, and just try to talk directly to the the dude with the easel. Just, um, hey, what are you what are you doing here? Uh, it's really none of your business. And uh, and then the the other person that took the lemon says, um, "I already said you need to back away." Well, you know, there's no reason that this needs to be a hostile interaction. Maybe. Um, you know, maybe we could work something out where both of us come out ahead here. Uh, I think we are done talking. And you can see that he pulls out of his holster a, um, a, a very heavy pistol that's inside his inside his jacket. And the other one, the other one on the other side seems tense. Uh, the one that's working on the easel just keeps on working. Almost whoa, like... Whoa, 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 guys, whoa. This is... Hey, 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 you don't have to be doing any of that. We just come down to see what you guys were doing. You see the Andersons up on the roof there? They're like mooning you. They think they're funny. Like, <laughs> like, like we just wanted to come down and check it out. We heard they were putting up some, some maybe some new communications towers. We don't need no guns. You, you can, you're okay. I um, I very, very slowly kind of raise my hands and tell them like, look, I'm not grabbing a gun. Just don't shoot. And I reach into my my inner jacket pocket. And um, I pull out like the rest of that head of broccoli that I had given a floret out earlier. Like, <laughs> look, like, I think maybe I could buy a little bit of your time and some information tonight. Does that sound like a fair deal? It's real. So the the um, the personal security looks over at the man with the easel, and he's like, and he goes, "What? What now?" And he mumbles some something to him, and he looks at you, and he's like. Hmm. I don't like broccoli. I already got lemons. That uh, you guys, you could take care of them. Whatever you want to do. And he goes back to work. And so the two guards basically step in front of the easel, and they're they're posting up. They have their hands on their on their um, pistols, ready to do something. If they obviously it looks like they're tense. If you're going to do something. Hey DM, while this was happening, um, can uh, Mako pull up in his agent um, any kind of search of this? person with the easel and how they look if they've appeared anywhere near town if any sort of cameras have or social media actually probably news have picked them up sure. just so we could figure out what we're dealing with yeah sure i have no idea what i should roll for that so <laughs> this is this is where we will uh, figure that out together that's a that's yeah. a that's a definite like um yeah that's a that's a that's that's an awesome um at least a library search if you have a at least um, a library search yeah at least okay. a library yeah, I'll search. Roll that. yeah go ahead and roll that all right my mate Let's roll. 
Did it roll? It did roll. There okay. It is. Uh, with every well, so with the twelve, that's uh, you kind of got some everyday knowledge of it. Um, just even putting in his face comes back that he's uh, that he's an architect for World Set. World Set. Mm -hmm. You say World Set, okay. the communication company. World okay. Set is uh, World Set is responsible, and they're not the only communications company, but they're one of the larger ones. But they provide net service, basically like data service to uh, the city net. The city net is your kind of like your um, your internet of the um, of the city. But also uh, companies like WorldSat provide coverage to your agent as well. Um, there's also uh, things called data pools that are on different corners of the street that you can go to and they act a lot like your agent where you go and search search the city net for information. Um, you know, find, you know, when the local restaurants open, maybe find um, you know, uh, maybe where merchandise is being sold and so forth. And so, um, that's what those do. And so the, the, these companies like WorldSat provide the net service for them. Okay. Um, last question on that, sir, on that check. Um, if I found anything on them, like, let's say someone took a public picture of them working kind of the way they are surveying the land. Is there anything like if I fast forward in time, is there anything that has come up from that position? Like have homes or like apartments been torn down? or new new things come up in that uh, these whenever these guys are spotted i hope that makes sense yeah it does so as you're kind of sifting through the like kind of sifting through that research and i imagine uh um mako does it really quickly i don't know if it's like one of your eyes start <laughs> changing yeah so i have a i have chiron which is allows me to have another picture in picture during the real world so i'm watching this happening while i'm also scanning all of my data from my agent okay so you see that this same architect um was the architect on a uh, an apartment building that was um, basically? If I mean, you can see the map, uh, from, like where you guys were looking at, but near uh, um, Japan. Um, okay. Give, give me the name right. I'm not, I'm, the name's drawing a blank right now. I don't have the map currently open, but uh, old Japan. Old town? Japan. Old Japan town. That there was an apartment okay. complex in there that was uh, got demolished and was made a communications tower in its place. Got it. Okay. Um, so, oh, so these as... are big towers. They're yes. Big. Yeah. They're not, they're not something they're you not, just. I'm thinking like cell phone tower. Yeah. No, it's something they okay. actually. Yeah, they actually have to do a whole infrastructure to uh, create these towers. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. It, is this information that I can have my agent send to them, almost like a you know instant message type of idea? Is that how it works? Yeah. I've yeah. Got, here. I've got the cheer on thing too. So if you want to send okay. it to my uh, my agent. You can. All right. So all of a sudden, those who have their agent interfaces on, all of a sudden, start getting messages from me and showing the pro progress. Like this is where they were. This is what happened three months later. Um, and then, then I think uh, Mako is just going to kind of lean up against. I imagine being in a door frame near Rabbit, um, while our two heavy guns went over there. So. Did you send it to Molly and the Andersons? Nope. Just okay. just these ones right here. Yeah. All right. Just for now. Oh man, we don't have like a signal or like a like an action word. But I we feel don't. like getting that information and like knowing how valuable this apartment is to like gaining a foothold and like really any aspirations we all have. Like, I'm gonna start swinging. <laughs> you, man, you do you, Mr. Black. <laughs> Go for it, Argus. <laughs> Let's show them what combat looks like. <laughs> okay, so, so there's, if I'm remembering right, there's one guy close to us. There's a car, and then the other guy's on the other side. Is that right? From your well, so now the the personal security are now standing in front of the uh, person that's making the drawings. The car is behind him. So they are okay. just that standing in front of them, basically. So there's two guys in front of us. Basically. There's two guys, yeah. Okay, and they and both have drawn their guns, or only one of them? No, they have their hands on their they have their hands on their what looks to be probably a um, probably a heavy to very heavy pistol that's in their holsters. They're making no effort to conceal it. They actually aren't concealed at all, so they can be the they can be very heavy pistols. So Argus, do you make any sort of motion to us, to I guess to me and Mako sitting kind of behind you that you're gonna do something? Yeah, I kinda <laughs> am still standing Excited. like maybe a foot from these guys. <laughs> I kinda turn back to you like, 
<laughs> oh god. In that case, I'm gonna try and jack in immediately to try and take control of the car if I can. Okay. When he, when I see him make that motion, like White Rabbit's like, all right, I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's. And when go. he does that, I'm gonna send this. I'm gonna send the message to the Andersons. Uh, to, <laughs> oh uh, lord. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna send a message to the Andersons to say, hey, what's up? These guys are not up to no good. Let's get them. <laughs> okay. <Like> that, DM. <laughs> so that. Uh... <laughs> is there any cover on the street? That's mostly what I'm concerned about right so now. So there is a uh, there. The only cover on the street, besides being back in the the door of the apartment, yeah, is, thanks. Yeah, is, I figured yeah, that. <laughs> is there's a there's a data pool uh, little uh, which are basically you can think of them as being like. A little bit larger than a like a mailbox. Think of a mailbox that we have today, like the post office mailboxes, the blue ones. You know, they're sure. you know that's about how big they are. Maybe a little bit larger. You could you could fit your body behind one if that's all you were doing. We're trying to tuck your arms and limbs behind it, but that's about thirty yards away. I'm not that fast. Yeah, thirty yards. We haven't switched to metric yet in twenty one. Uh, whatever this is. <laughs> well, so this interesting. You say that. Uh, <laughs> Um, so this game, long conversation about that, yeah. <laughs> this this game uses the uh, meters uh, and yards interchangeably. They basically say a yard is equal to a meter, even though it's not exact. But that's basically what it's equal to. So um, I am deciding to use yards just because most of us in the United States don't use the metric <laughs> system. And um, I don't know if, if you think of a football field, you can at least get a, a sense of what a yard sure. is. It's three yes. feet. So that we're going to go with yards, but if you want to think of it as meters, if I say 30 yards, it is 30 meters. If you want to think of it the same way in this oh, game, I'm, they use both, fine. they both, they use both the same way. I'm going to just say yards for the sake of keeping it consistent. Um, if you're making a motion, uh, Argus, we are going to enter into initiative. <laughs> so what are you doing, Argus? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to melee actually, and I'm going to... I'm trying to think because I don't have like a martial arts specialty, but I'm going to use my heavy melee weapon, which is a lead pipe and try to break one of their arms. Okay. So as you basically like have that, that I don't know if that comes down from your sleeve from up your sleeve or your back, <laughs> but everyone go ahead and make a uh, initiative roll, which is your, um, your reflex score, your ref plus a D 10. All right. That one more time. What am I rolling? It's your uh, reference score plus a d10. So if you roll a d10 and add, um, where's the reference score? It's your. It's one of your stats. Like you can just character. click. You can oh, click the actual the stat and it'll roll it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Oh, on cool. the character sheet. Okay, so reference. There we go. Nice. Oh dang! Quick. All right. Both, so. Oh, we're supposed to read our dice rolls, right? <laughs> oh yeah, okay. that's right. I got a sixteen. Yeah, good memory. <laughs> all right, well, so right, rabbit. for all those you see who are uh, listening and not watching, <laughs> I think uh, yeah, I think we're initially going to be doing watching more than listening. <laughs> we're not there yet, but <laughs> yeah. for the future. Um. Oh wow, you guys got actually pretty decent rolls, everybody except for mm -hmm. Mako. Sorry, Mako. Yeah, Mako's at a seven. It's okay. <laughs> He's in the doorway. Yeah, he started all problem. this <laughs> unexpectedly, <laughs> sending out his text messages. All right, so Argus, go ahead and um, tell us what you're doing. Um, yeah, so kind of upon getting Mako's message, I made a split second sort of calculation and uh, realized there was like really nothing good going to come of letting them continue to survey the building to essentially demolish it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I slipped the lead pipe actually out of the inside of my, uh, my long key coat. And um, I'm just stepping forward at uh, one of the goons and just trying to break an arm. Like I'm just swinging at a forearm or whatever it looks like. Um, like they have their arms crossed or whatever, whatever arms on top. I'm just going to nice. Hammer okay. That thing. So, uh, so when he's basically as you as they see that, I mean they're they have reflexes too. You see them draw their guns. So, um, you if you want to aim for the gun, that's that's called a called shot, but that's going to be a minus eight. 
to your check to do any type of called shot, or you just go ahead and Whoa. swing, or you just go ahead and swing at him and hope to get a critical hit and do some damage. Okay, and, and like a like a limb would be the same kind of rule. It's so really, uh, there's your um, the way that this game works is you're either aiming at their body or you're aiming at their head. Anytime you aim at their heads, is the same thing. A called shot's minus eight. Oh. Uh, other than that, you're mainly uh, you are usually assumed to be attacking their their body. In mass, like yeah. kind of speaking of things, I wish I would have thought of before I declared melee um, <laughs> and got us into a fight. What's considered like a good number? Like like <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, I will tell you one advantage of melee is that you ignore half of the stopping power of their armor around it up when you do your damage. Oh, okay. Because armor cool. is more is more made to stop bullets, ammunition type than it is a blunt force of a pipe, for example, at a certain spot. Okay. Um, well, I think I'm just going to regular swing because I don't want to biff it. Okay. And just get blown to shreds here. Something tells me I'm getting blown to shreds either way, though. <laughs> uh, okay, so I need to go to combat and... Go to your uh, melee weapon. So the, what we're going to do is you can use the your combat tab on your character sheet to do the, the attack. But okay. when, when it comes time to do damage, we're going to use the advanced dice roller because... Uh, and you'll see why when we get to the damage roll. Okay. Um... Okay, so for the attack, I go to skills and then I press melee weapon. Uh, it's actually underneath your 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 combat weapons, but that works too. Oh, okay. It's a, yeah, it's actually that one works fine. So twenty. All right, so he's trying to dodge that. He does not get out of the way. Um, he tries to. He sees you coming. He tries to like oh like try to pull back and try to get his pistol on you, and then you um he, um you hit him in the body. So you're gonna head and do, go ahead and do the the damage for your heavy melee weapon. What's that damage? 3d6 okay so if uh so yeah you do 14 damage to him which is a pretty good shot now you, the reason why we're using advanced dice roller um you see how it lights up one of the sixes if anytime you at any time when you're rolling damage and you get two sixes that's going to get a critical hit which is like bad news and including yourself if you get to get a critical hit, critical hit on you so you didn't get a critical hit but you did do 14 damage to him um, actually, his uh, his armor is going to block some of that, but um, he's still going to take a pretty good pretty good hit with that. Nice. And then you can still move, Argus. Um, actually, okay. um, you're a very heavy weapon. What's your R rate of fire? Your ROF? Does it say two or does it say one? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Let me see. Most um, melee weapons, you're able to swing, swing twice in a turn, which is why I asked. Oh yeah, that's two. Yeah. So go ahead if you want to swing it again. Can I still move if I swing it again? Yeah, so you can always move. Uh, you can move your move stat times two in yards a turn. And you can split okay. your move. You can swing, move, and then swing again. You can, Okay, so I... And each turn you have a maximum of two rate of fires, basically. Melee weapons, most of them do it twice. Most of okay. them, yeah. So I did nine more damage. Well you, well, you have to go ahead and make another attack roll. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because he's going to try to evade. He's going to try to evade this as well. I just got so excited. Uh, okay. That's 21 to hit that time. Wow. Can you hover over the 21 just so I can see what you, what you rolled? What is that? Your, um, you must have rolled a 9, right? Yeah, I rolled a 9. Cool. I'm still getting used to the math. I'm uh, coming from d and I'm not used to yeah. seeing 21 rolls all the time. Um, so another... Right. Give me a second. Okay. Um, do you want me to reroll damage or do we do you no, want you to take the nine? No, you can take the nine. That's fine. Okay. All right. And so just because I'm still like you getting used to this, it's the base mod the base plus the actual skill plus the roll, right? Yes. So six plus six plus nine was exactly. the Exactly, exactly. Okay. And, that, and that's the great thing about this system. Everything in the game is usually the stat plus the skill plus the D10. Most things okay. in the game are that, so. Nice, um, that's simple. Yeah, so he, uh, he, as tough as he is, he kind of, he cries out, um, he cries out in pain as you whack him twice with that, with that bar. So uh, he's not, he's not down yet, but you can tell that, um, you can tell that you did some heavy damage to him. Um, cool. I'm going to, can I run away? 
to the portal. You coward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you're just leave me out in the street to die. Yeah. Oh, you... wait, wait. I'm sorry. Is K right next to me in yeah. the street? It's yes. you. Oh, okay. Yeah, Come it's on, you. man. It's you, you picked a fight. Now you're running away. <laughs> it's you and K next to each other. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, as far as movement speed goes, like, what what are we looking at for, like, movement speed? So it's your move stat times two. That's how many yards you can move. Oh, so we're not, we're not getting cover. You're, 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 you're about 15 yards from the very fr- from the front door. 30 yards from the nearest, um, from that the data pool. But 15 yards, you would have to actually get inside and shut the door to do that. Oh, five. Okay. So the way, right, well, the way cover works is... In, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, with all that in mind, I'm just going to uh, hang out with Kay. Stay strong. <laughs> and uh, uh, hope that he does some good damage. <laughs> this is not how we deal with things. <laughs> Um, Kay, you just see uh, Argus pull out a crowbar and just go whack, whack on this guy. Um, it is now your turn. Um, keep in mind in this game that your turn is three seconds. So awesome. moving and how, doing actions are all within a span of three seconds. How close is the car? The car is about, um, it, yeah, it's about it's about six yards because it's it's behind everybody. Okay, all right. Um... I'm going to uh, pull out my gun. I'm going to yell at Argus and say, this is not how we handle problems. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, shoot at the, the one he didn't hit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> with my, I'm assuming I left my shotgun at home, so I'm going to pull out my pistol. What kind of pistol do you have? I have a heavy pistol. Okay. So um, you are, I'll give you your range because you're only, you're right near them. You're, you're less than six yards away. Okay. So um, you only, you just need a, um, you need a 13 or higher on your combat roll to hit him. Sweet. Likewise, this is the roll they need to hit you. So keep in mind as you're doing these ranges. All right. I'm going to hit attack. Okay. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and do your damage. Okay. So do you see it? Go you ahead. don't want me to click damage next to it. You want me to go over it to the thing and roll three d sixes, right? Yeah, and keep in mind when you do the advanced dice roll and roll twenty, it's gonna it will keep track of your recent rolls. That's not very much damage. No, there. so when when you shoot at him, you see that it hit him right in the right in the chest, and it just it's you can tell the kev it bounced right off the Kevlar, or at least I mean it did like a like a thud. Um, you should have still another shot. Yeah, I do. All right. All right. So Kay just goes ba ba, and so um, this neighborhood was reasonably quiet. There were some there were some bikes um, racing around, some ambulances off in the distance. But now the 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 the, the twilight has erupted in gunshot uh, as as Kay fires these first shots. Um, you do you do hit him with that one. Um, so you you shoot him like basically like like a centimeter away from the the other shot that you that you already shot with him. So it kind of, so it breaks his armor. Nice. Um, but there's just a thin trickle of blood kind of pops out as he as he holds it. But then he gives you this menacing look as. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> um, is there any such thing as like attack of opportunity? So like if I run to the car, like try to run behind the car, is he gonna be able to? You know what I'm talking about? Like no. D- there's oh, no. And, uh, there's no attack of opportunity. Like yes. This game, okay, uh, gonna... you'll see in this game that one strategy is to use the hold action quite a bit more than you would in other games, okay. especially when you got people popping up and down from cover. And, sure, and sure. if you ever want to do that, I'll describe how that how that works. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to run for cover. Um, I'm going to, you know, the odd thing and run towards them for cover. So where are you running to? To, to the other, I'm trying to run to the other side of the car. So that you said six okay. uh, yards away, and I have a move of five, and I get ten. Yeah. So right. So the way, so. Uh, let me describe how cover works in this game. You can see if you still want to do that. So this game oh. is you are you are either in you are either in cover, or you are okay. not in cover. There is no partial cover. There's no partial. No. Cover. And so if you're okay. behind cover, every cover has its own hit points that they can just kind of blast through until the cover is eliminated. Or if they can move within line of sight, they can go ahead and just take your attack as if you aren't behind cover. So being so close, the car 
just giving you advice, probably not your best bet, especially if he just chases you and just goes up and shoots you. <laughs> so. Awesome. Can I run behind the dude that they're trying to guard? Uh, sure, but you wouldn't be able to use him as a shield unless you use the grab action and then... And I don't have an action right now. Not right now, you don't. You yeah, just okay. use your... But the way, if you ever want to grab somebody and use them as a shield, you would first grab them to see see if you successfully got a hold of them, and then you can use them as a human shield after that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well then, I guess I'm going... Am I just going to sit here with Argus? Well, you can move farther away if you okay. want to, because pistols are not as effective at longer ranges. So oh, it yeah. makes it a harder yeah. shot. So I don't know if I want to run <laughs> straight towards the building, because if they're going to shoot from the building out at these people, I don't want to be in their way. Okay. Right? So I'm going to kind of V-line off to the side there. Okay. Because I am going to ditch Argus, because he's stupid. <laughs> did uh, Knowing that now, Argus, did you want to move back as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like knowing that there is, like, um, yeah, that the damage kind of falls off. But I do want to go back with the pipe. Like, I feel like the pipe's kind of the way to go here. So you want to stay close? So I want to stay close, like within run up and hit him range, but okay. as far back as possible, if that makes sense. Well, you tell me what your move rating is times two, and that's how many yards you could have moved. You got to tell me how much you want to move back then. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, keep, so... it, keep in mind, they get to still move on their turn and can close that distance to make it a closer shot, so... Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to run uh, 12, uh, yeah, 12 yards backwards. Okay. Like pretty much kind of halfway between where I'm currently standing and then that um, I keep forgetting what we named as the other cover, not the apartment, but the it's a data office. pool. It's like a the data yeah. pool. Yeah. Kind of over like halfway between the data pool and where I was currently standing. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, Kay, you're running back toward the building? Yeah. Okay. Full speed. Gotcha. I'm sorry. I don't... Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, so, my, your... but my full speed is less than his, so I only get 10 yards. Oh, okay. So is your move rating a 5? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um... I did not put... I did not dump into my combat skills, thank you, Argus Black. <laughs> By the way, uh, this, is a good, know, right? this is a good time to say this. Uh, as we are learning this game, um, in between scenarios, if you want to take some adjustments to your character now you know how the game works, we're totally going to do that. Or if you want to okay. go, I don't need all these points in that now that I know how it works. Well, we'll do that before the next scenario. No worries. If Argus so. gets me killed, can I still use this character? That's what I want to know. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. But uh, we're not there yet because White Rabbit's up. Well, oh, nice. I'm glad I got to go before they go. <laughs> run, right. run, their, run them over with the car. And that's my plan. All right. So I'm going to, um, I guess, is, so jacking in, I guess, is my first net action, right? Yes. Okay. So I'll jack in. And then um, what, what do I find on that first level? So on the first level, you see um, it's actually pretty basic. Um, nice. Perfect. So you use one action to jack in. Um, there is a uh, there's a password, basically like a key code. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'm going to activate a booster. So I have a booster just for this. Uh, I'm I'm activating the or resing, I guess I should call it bo the booster worm. But okay. for me, it's a golden key, and it increases all backdoor checks you make by plus two as long as you have this program resed. Okay, so that's your second interface action, right? How many you yeah. have a turn? Remind me how many you have. Three. Three. Okay. Three. And then uh, my third action will be to um, to backdoor. Okay. To so try and enter the password. So go ahead and make a um, interface ability adding also as, and you can add afterward as well what the what your program gives Plus you. Plus two. Yeah. Uh, so that's a that's an eight. That's an eight. Well, yeah. So it, it's supposed to be just the interface plus your role. That's it. Interface plus the role plus whatever the program gave you. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. eight. It's, yep. uh, it's, yeah, it's actually very simple. So you find out real fast that the passcode is zero, 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 zero. Yes. <laughs> so, um, cool. so with that, the car starts up. Um, um, even, yeah, you'd have to get a, um, you'd have to get a really bad role for, uh, role for that. This thing is not designed to protect against Netrunners. 
And uh, and so, yeah, the car comes to life and it says, uh, you know, you hear just a female voice. It says, where to? Uh, do I talk to the voice? I'm sorry. I know it's a new question. You don't need to. Uh, you have uh, you have a neural network. Okay. And so you can issue commands basically through your interface plugs into the car. You don't necessarily need to talk to. It, it actually reads your um, maneuvering abilities, your driving abilities from your um, from you yourself in your own um, neural network rather than you having to speak the commands. Right. So White Rabbit, uh, do I have another action here? Do, like, can I tell it what to do? Um, you is can. This part, is this part of my backdoor action? This is uh, the backdoor action is you got past the password. Okay. Then in that case, I think that's probably my last action because I. It is. Yeah. I jack, okay. So I jacked in. I used the booster, and then I got the passcode. But so. the, but this turn, you do have control of the car now for your next turn. But it All does right, cool. start up, and so uh, with that, the security go, the the one that was uh, the one that you uh, fired at uh, K, he's like, what the what the, and he turns around, and so he is um, he's motioning to the to the architect. He's like. The car, and then the um, the architect starts like trying to grab his uh, easel back, and so um, he takes a shot at uh, at UK, um, but with his reaction of just he's not going to do his rate of fire uh, two in this turn. He's just actually going to do the one. How far were you away again? Well, I was. Uh, I think you said we were five, and then I ran another. 10, 10 okay so, so you're at the 15 okay yeah so his shot goes he, his shot goes uh dangerously close to you. you you see that this guy's a pretty good shot but it does not it does not hit you um the other sec- weave. <laughs> the other security that's uh in front of uh um in front of you um argus he just pulls out his uh he pulls out his pistol and he's he's firing um pretty close range <laughs> so his first shot hits you <laughs> Oh man. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure if it matters, but I'm 17 feet back. Uh, he hits you for he hits you for six with that first shot. What's your stopping power in your armor? A little, um, a little super low. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, what kind of armor are you wearing? I think you were wearing the um, uh, light armor tech. I think you all had light armor tech. I think your stopping power is 11. 11. Yeah. So that's uh, th- yeah that. You barely feel the bullet hit. You feel like a thud, almost like a toddler's punching your stomach. That's about all you feel in your armor. Um, okay. I'll give you, if you want to make a smart-ass remark, I'll give you one smart-ass remark as he pulls the trigger before he shoots you again. But... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, his next one hits you as well. Uh for nine, but again, it does not at close range. It's with with this pistol, it does not break your armor. That's crazy, man! You should have taken the broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mako, you are up. Um, the other security guard is uh, he backs away from you, um, Argus, and he uh, he um, he backs away, and it looks like he's trying to sling something off of his shoulder, and you can see that uh, it's an assault rifle. But anyways, Mako, you're up. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> first thing Mako does, does. The first thing he does, uh, he's going to message the Andersons up top instantly. Um, and he's just going to put, they're attacking us. All we did was try to talk. Please help. Um, and then I'll tell uh, Gina to take Rico and maybe Rico inside. Um, and then I know this is not conducive for our team but my character is just going to take any sort of dodge and hide action at this point okay just sitting there waiting for an opportunity to really f something up that will go in our favor okay well where do you where do you want to get behind you want to get behind the data pool do you want to stay behind the door or the hallways you can kind of pop around from the apartment uh, no i think i will stay in the doorway like just uh i mean i imagine myself standing in the doorway where i could pop inside real quick if i needed to um but i'm staying outside to get a better view um is there any sort of like hold actions in this game that i can use there is a um yeah there is a hold action where you basically uh tell me at what point in the initiative count you want to act and what condition makes you act for example okay. say one of these militech first private securities was hiding behind the car and he was fully in cover and he pops up to shoot and then drops right back down to cover 
you could say, I'm going to take my hold action to add his initiative count. And if he pops up, I want to take my action to shoot. That'd be an example of a hold action. With that, though, whether or not you still want those conditions to be met, if they happen, you have to do the action you said. So sometimes okay. that may change and you may not want to do it anymore, but you don't have the choice if that's the action you said you wanted to do. So you got to think of this as a combat, fast paced, fluid. Right now it's been three seconds. Yeah. So it's like so all seven I, uh, super fast. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so DM, I think what I would do in three seconds is send that message, look up to make sure that I'm seeing either the Anderson's that are going to throw something or they're running away. And then I will go take full coverage or coverage behind that data pool. Okay. And wait for an opportunity. I'm not going to hold an action. Just going to wait. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so the Anderson's go Molly uh, peeks over the edge and she goes, what the, Hey, get it. And so you see her say something to them and they disappear. Uh, you can't see them anymore from the top of the building, but in their three seconds, that's what they do. So they do get your message, uh, Mako. But then um, Argus, you are up. All right. Um, so I was trying to see how alcoholic is the drink that I took and put in my pocket. Like, is this a possible Molotov? Um, not really. Okay. And it'd be a lot. Cool. It, it would be a bit to do in three seconds <laughs> to make an explosive out of it. All right. Um. All right. Sticking with the lead pipe then. Uh, <laughs> hey, your lead pipe did the most damage so far. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, it's, Trusty, it's a it's a classic. Um, so I'm gonna run up to the same dude, and uh, was it the dude who shot me with yeah. the pistol? Was mm -hmm. the one I already hit? Yeah, your ar yeah your armor stopped that though. Nice. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna run up to him and uh, bang bang. Go for it. He's gonna try to evade. Okay. Um, and then. So combat roll with heavy melee. Okay. All right. Yeah, you beat uh, you beat his. So go ahead and do your damage. Okay. So that's eleven. And then uh, I'm gonna take that second swing at him. God, you're rolling high. See. Yeah, he, you got you hit him again. So you hit him. Uh, yeah, you hit him once again, and uh, right in his chest as he's trying to pull out the obviously Paul's assault rifle and do your other damage. And that's another nine. And so he uh, he as with that one, he he falls down to the ground. It seems like you have crushed something in his ribs or something on the ground, but he's uh, seems to be barely breathing as he's laying on the ground. Nice. Um. You want to move? I I think I already moved to get up there with the melee. Um, he was only about six yards away from you. He was backing up from you as he was pulling out. You still have uh, what your move minus the six yards. Minus the six, so I would be able to move six. How far am I from the other guy? Um, he's about he's about he's only about four yards from you. Um, and then in terms of like where the car is at. When White Rabbit tries to hit that guy with the car, am I in the line of the car? No, the car is facing uh, kind of forward and this the the facing the opposite direction of where you're fighting. You basically were fighting on the back end of the car. Okay, so I'm going to step like just back past the edge of the car, if that makes sense, so that if he comes to approach me and he's standing directly in front of me to attack me, he's like lined up for just like a straight car to the body. Okay. That's some meta gaming. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know he's going to run him over. I mean, I guess the car did start. So Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. like, the car started. <laughs> I think he, I don't know. Like, would we know that our allies started the car? Is no, I mean, unless, unless White Rabbit said something. <laughs> but, I mean, he kind of gave us the okay, which, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> he, he knows I'm a net runner. Yeah, and I would say, you know, you know they didn't start it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's true. All right, Kay, you're up. All right. Uh, and so what happens with an aim shot? You lose eight? Minus eight to the roll. And now keep in mind, uh, oh you guys have luck as one of your, your stats. Okay. And, and you can, uh, before you roll, you can expend luck points to add to your roll. Um, your luck points are gone uh, once you use them all. Um, but you basically get 
those once a scenario. Oh, all right. Well, I got one guy left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, that guy. I want to shoot him in the head. So you're gonna take that that called shot. Yeah, because he's not armored in the head, right? You only described body armor. He actually has armor on both. Fine. But the but the good part about hitting um, in the head is you are going to do um, extra damage if you do hit in the head. Fantastic. All right, so yeah. I'll, I'm going to hit him in the head. So I'm going to roll my attack, but I want to add... So I can tell you, like, if I have five luck, I want to add three to it. Um, yes, works? you can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have five luck. I'm going to add three to my roll. Okay. And you're looking at getting at the range that you're at is you're doing with your pistol is a 13. So you got to beat a 13. In this game, when any number I give you, you actually get to get higher than it. So you actually need a 14 or higher. So doing your minus eight, 14. though. But you're going to have a... Doing my minus eight. Okay, I'm going to try it. Why not? <laughs> and does that count as... Does it take extra time to do it, a range? It takes, it takes all of your... Uh, um, your ROF, your uh, rate of fire. It takes the whole range of fire to aim it and time it and do it. So. Fine. I'm going to take all five points of my of my uh, my luck then Okay. That. The advantage is you multiply the damage that gets through the head armor. Any armor that gets through the head armor, you multiply it by two. Fantastic. I like that. All right. So I'm going to roll my attack. All right. Here we go. See if he gets lucky. Oh! 17 plus... plus Five minus right? eight. So that's fourteen. You hit. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and do the damage. <laughs> Roll Glad that I damage. Used it all. <laughs> all right. So yes. let's do damage. So Kay right. lines up. He just like closes an eye and pa. Nine. Nine. Does that do nothing for me? No, it does. It's just not as much as you, you would hope. <laughs> so. Oh, you know what though? I forgot that I have cyberware that helps me. Do I have to do something to activate that? No, just tell us. No, it's always active. What is it? It uh, adds one to check when making an aim shot requires cyberware. Oh, okay. Well, you got the shot anyways. But okay, yeah, fantastic. Just so right. you know. Yeah, in the future, I can. So, so it's seven instead of eight in the future. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, okay. You, you do get through his head armor though. Um, it's not going to be like a, a critical shot. I mean, but you do you do damage him. All right, I like damage. Damage is good. And then um, I'm going to just stand my ground, I think, at this point. I'm far enough away that I, I feel comfortable. And he's not and he's not unslinging the assault rifle, so I'm, I feel a little better about that. Okay. Um, so he goes, and uh, after, that, after you get through that shot, he looks at, he glances to his left, the, that architect is... He just grabs his easel and he's running toward the car. Um, he sees, uh, I mean, he sees an Argus with a with uh, with a bloody pipe. He sees UK with a um, um, <laughs> that just shot him in the head, and uh, <laughs> uh, he's he just yells, "Get in the car!" And so he's clearly outnumbered. And so um, they uh, they jump in the 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 architect jumps in the back seat. He hops in the front seat, and he. Uh, um, he is about to uh, he's about to take off. Actually, White Rabbit, you get to go first. I'm sorry. Um, but I know that you're taking control of the car. But uh, the doors. you kind of you kind of know what they're going to do. I mean, you can see this happening after after K gets shot. This is the motion they're making. What do you want to do on your turn? You have the you have your net actions. So where are they in position to the car? Like what's facing in front of the car? Are they, cause you, you said that uh, Argus was in back, but are they near the front of the car? Are they on the side? They are right in, cause remember the, the, the two Militech uh, guards got in front of the easel and the easel was standing like right in the right in the center of the car between the front and back, uh, the driver's side and the back passenger side right behind the driver's side. They're basically just standing, standing there. So they're no more than three or four yards from trying to jump into the car. You had started the car. Argus had gone over and beat the other one to hell right behind the car. Make uh, um, K had shot the one right that's uh, that was basically right in front of the, the the guy with the easel, and so now you can see them scrambling, getting ready to run. Okay, so if I take a net action or an interface, I guess, or an interface ability to control, that means I control one of the physical aspects of the car. You can, yeah, you basically take control of one of the control nodes of the car. Okay, so um, so that would be another interface. I guess first, 
That'd be another interface yeah. check. It's probably, I mean, I'll let you know because it's not a net architecture built thing. It's just, it's a low difficulty value, but you still would need to make the roll just to make sure you don't roll a one. Okay, so what I want to do is I, since, since it seems like they're not really within ramming position, I would try to lock the doors and maybe back up so that I could like position it in a ramming position. Okay. <laughs> So is that is that one control check or is that uh, no is that two for the locking and then the moving? No, you basically take the interface ability to gain control of the car, and now you can drive the car. Sweet. All right then. So I need to roll interface here, or yeah, my interface roll. Oh, there we go. Nine. Okay. So yeah, you uh, you have taken control of the car, and so it says the voice says again. Uh, where to? Now you have to be within 60, 60 uh, uh, yards of the car to keep control of it. Right. Um, Actually, uh, uh, I, I, yeah. Um, okay, well, just to teach you guys the game, I, I forgot this part. It's not 60, it's actually six yards. You would need to be near the, you would probably be need to be right near the car to do any of this, um, which is fine because they wouldn't even notice you if you got more toward the front of the hood of the car if you want to put yourself closer, but it's probably a good thing to establish this now so we don't play the game wrong, but it is six yards, not 60. Six yards? Six yards, okay. yeah. Um, I'll run up however close I need to be to the car uh, and just making sure that I'm, I guess, standing to the side of my two targets. And okay. then uh, I'll, I'll just tell the computer to floor it and try and hit the, the two people in front of them. Well, they're not in, in front, front of, of the car. Again, the car is parked and they're off to the side of the car, but you could uh, remove their getaway if that's what you're trying to do. Well, so I'm going to lock the doors then and back up okay. and have it just sort of like try and position it to get... Are you trying to stay within six yards? Because otherwise you just become jacked out and you'll have to do the interface again to jack back in. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and stay close to it if I can. Okay. So you're just like... <laughs> I like Kay's thing, grabbing onto the car. Okay, so when you back the car up, the car just goes bloop, bloop, as it rolls over that other security uh, personnel that, <laughs> that Argus <laughs> dropped. He did. <laughs> Oops. He was already dead. But uh, Yeah, uh, so I can move 14 yards, so I'll just try and keep up with the car as close as I can. Okay. And then um, and then I'm gonna as, as it backs up, I'm going to just say floor it, and so that next action is going to be basically moving forward, full steam ahead. Do you want to do that on this turn? Do you still have an inter you still have an interface action left? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it this turn. <laughs> so there's no hellhounds that are in the vehicle. Nothing that's going to damage you for jacking out without using the jacking out ability. Normally, if you're in a net architecture and you were to jack out where something moved further away from than the six yards, it could do some damage to you. But in this case, you're just controlling a. Uh, a car that just that you could interface with. So with that, so there's no there's no need to jack out. There, is basically what you're saying. There's no need to take the jack out interface action. You just okay. send it. So with that, cool. you just say floor it. You lose connection with the car. It says uh, the the voice just says okay. Um, <laughs> reaching top speed <laughs> as it backs away as it, as you no longer uh, have any connection with the car. But it starts. It just flies down the street basically. Um, with that, uh, Mako, you're looking at uh, security, one, one per private security along with this architect who are basically trying to uh, trying to scramble. Is there something you want to do? And they, uh, they are locked in the car, correct? No, they never got in the car because actually oh, White, okay. White Rabbit went um, first. I, I would say at this moment, because I mean, he's not a fighter. Uh, he would probably stay undercover at the moment. Um, and if there's an option or an opportunity for um, him to get the, for me to get the papers or whatever the easel it is that he's working on, I would like to get a hold of that if possible. Okay. It's in the architect's um, grasp right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull it from him. Like this, this level of combat is not what my character is built for. So <laughs> um, he'll just play support, I guess. Feel a need. See any feel a need. <laughs> okay. I don't have anything right now that he's going to do. Other okay. Than stay undercover. Oh, it makes sense. Not willingly walking out, <laughs> bolts flying everywhere. <laughs> so. I wasn't willing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of us were. <laughs> well, you're either brave or dumb. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Pirates. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Argus, you are up, and you have a uh, scrambling architect who's trying to grab his easel and trying to run he sees the car like dart away and he's like what the 
and then the um, the um, the private security is uh, looking at K, but kind of backing up with a with his heavy pistol out. But he's backing up slowly, almost like just scanning, like trying to see where the next shot is coming from. And uh, um, he, he seems to almost ignore the architect at this point, as if he's just trying to look out for himself as he's backing um, as he's backing up onto the sidewalk where the car was parked. Remember, this was parked across the street. Of course. Um, okay, so what are the grapple mechanics? Like, how do I grab the architect? Here? Sure. So you would go up to him, and you're going to do a, uh, you're going to make a dex plus your brawling skill plus a d10. Uh, okay. And then, so, and he's going to do the, he's going to do the same where he's trying to evade it. Okay. So dex plus brawling. So. So you're about six yards from the architect. So you're running up and trying to grab him. Yeah. Plus a d10. Mm-hmm. So that's 18 to grab him. Yeah, so he, uh, he, he uh, basically you come up behind him and you just grab onto him. So you have control over him. I'm going to like continue to hang on to him, look at the security and say, now's a great time to walk away. Okay, excellent. Um, so you have him, uh, you have him, you're holding onto him. So now in, in, uh, in your subsequent turns, there's some things you can do with him now that you've grabbed him. You can Ooh. throw him down to the ground to do actually direct body damage to him. You can choke him out. If you do that three turns in a row, he becomes unconscious. You can uh, throw him. And the other thing you can do is, my personal favorite, use him as a human shield, which in this case, you probably aren't going to need to do that, but you can actually hold him up as a shield and he moves with you. And in fact, uh, now that you have him, he does move with you. Um... You also take minus two to all other actions, though, while you have hold of him, just because your focus is on him. Of course. Um, okay, so if I'm choking him out, like, what does that look like? Like, is that damage to him, or is that just with the goal of putting him to sleep, or is that just to control him better? You're going to deal your uh, body stat damage, your body stat damage, your base score directly to him. Okay, and can I choke him out while I back him up to the apartment? Yeah. Yeah. We're, Sweet. Right now on this turn, you've successfully grabbed him. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was your action. In subsequent turns, oh. you can now do these other things now that you have a, grabbed a hold of him. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Can I still move with him, or is that yes. my turn's over? Okay, well, you, so I'm going to... Well, you move the six yards, so now you can continue on moving. Okay, so I have six more yards of movement. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... Continue to back towards the apartment with the architect. Okay. Um, Kay, you're up. The security, oh, the private security that's in front of you seems to be backing away. Um, his response to Argus grabbing him was he didn't seem to care. Okay. So he was. I'm gonna I'm gonna yell at him. You can leave the weapon too. Oh, nice. Keep my and then, and then and then uh and then keep my gun so this is my hold action so if i think that he's going to if he doesn't drop the gun and doesn't turn around and then go away then i'm going to drop him gotcha excellent okay all right so on his turn um he um let's see so he lays, uh, he basically lays down his, uh, he has a very heavy pistol and he Ooh. lays, he lays that down on the ground and he, uh, just puts his hands up like that and says, good fight, good fighting, backing up now. And he basically spends his, uh, he's going to spend his, it doesn't take him an action to drop the weapon, but he's going to move quickly backwards. He basically, uh, moves double his movement to move backwards. And then when he gets to a certain point that he sees that someone's not going to shoot him in the back, he basically just turns and walks down the street. Now, what he does is he just puts his hands in his pocket and takes off his shades and puts them in his like pocket and just starts walking as if he's planning on walking down the street and not being noticed. So uh, with that, is anyone taking a pot shot at him or are you just letting him go? I want that assault rifle. <laughs> I know. Do we want to leave loose ends? That's a that's a fair point. Yeah. 
Where's that? Where's that car at? <laughs> the car is down the street, down the other way, the, the direction he's walking, basically, as as uh, White Rabbit sent it in reverse backward. Mm. I'm not shooting at him. Yeah, I don't think I would either. I let him go. Okay. So at that moment, uh, Molly and her four uh, youngsters are all uh, between the ages of 18 and 25. Where they pop out. They have uh, an assortment of weapons between crowbars, bats. One of them has a, has a rusty knife. They walk out and they go, where's the fight? Where's the fight? And they see uh, Argus that's holding uh, holding this man who's like, um, he's petrified in your hands, Argus, especially as he just saw you take down uh, the private security that he hired and then get run over. Um, <laughs> but what would you what would uh, what would you like to do with this man? Um, I'm gonna choke him a little. Okay. Wow. Just let him know that we're not messing around, you know. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of choke him out for a sec uh, before we start uh, really questioning him. Okay. Um. What is your body set? Uh, bot body stat. Yeah, the the yeah your bot your body stat. What's the six. value? Six. So you do six damage directly to him as you go. Oh, I can't talk. I... And you start basically uh, choking him, and so you do six damage directly to his hit points. Okay, and then kind of as that's happening, I'm going to say, okay, so we're going to stop doing this, and then you're going to start talking, and you're going to tell us exactly what all of this is and why you hired security to escort you to our apartment building. Understand? Uh, yeah, yes. I think he gets it. Uh, so I'm new. Uh, yeah. Kind of loosen up the grip and just bring him over to, um, I imagine there's like a, a, a stoop. Sure. Or yeah. Some sort of area right in front of the apartment. Where we're all just kind of, Sitting. Yeah, so the apartment door is only like a single pull door. It's not a very big entrance, but there is a stoop out front. But it's about, about room for maybe two, three people to sit if they're sitting beside each other. Um, cool. Uh, why don't you have a seat right there? All right, so he sits down. Um, he drops his papers. I mean, he dropped them when you start choking him. Okay. I'll pick that up. I'll pick up his papers. Okay. Check him over. All right, so you see that he's uh, making um, photos, measurements of, uh, it seemed like he has uh, some type of cyberware that connects himself to his camera to make easily easy, easy measurements of the building. And uh, it's basically next to the building is a drawing of uh, proportions of a, of a tower, like a communications tower. And um, it's, and he, he has notes saying things like perfect measurements, measurements match, um, and then on the bottom, it says um, um, it says uh, destruction date, and then it's actually tomorrow's date. Ooh. Our apartment complex. Dang, man. Dang. I had to run a credit check, and I had to wait <laughs> for years. There's like a whole waiting list to get into this place. <laughs> How would I move all my stuff? Um, Mako's gonna go over to Rabbit, um, still lavender eyes this time. Uh, we need to find all security cameras and kill anything that's within at least a three mile block. And I don't know about that walker, but, um, we should do something about that car too. I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, even if we kill these, these brothers, does it even make a difference? Well, I, I think that's that's Argus and uh, Kay's deal at this moment. Um, by the way, Mako's not showing his face, and he's continuing to not show his face this entire time. Um, so, uh, you have the papers too. We need to uh, we need to forge them and either change the address and send it back into the database, or we need to make it this all disappear. But I feel like this is something we're going to need to sit down and do. Um, Whatever you want to do. All right, mate, you're, you're on step 50, and I feel like I'm on step two, but that sounds like a good idea. 
I'm going to go search the body that's in the street and pick up the guns and my lemons from the guy's pocket. <laughs> okay. So you find on the, you find an assault rifle and a very, um, a very heavy pistol. So now you have two very heavy pistols and an assault rifle that you basically have taken off of these uh, Militech private security. Men. Fantastic. Hey, can I see the, can I see those lemons? <laughs> sure. What do you want my limits for? Uh, look at them. Uh, these are pretty good counterfeits. Yeah, you know, I got I got some sources. Nice. Uh, I've seen some good ones too. These are these are nice. I hand it back. <laughs> Where are the Andersons at the moment? No, uh, they seem to they they uh, basically um, they're they're on the street now, and they. Okay. Um, yeah, they they they're continuing to drink their cans of smash. Okay, they uh, look like I'm they're itching for a fight, and then they got back down there, and then there's no <laughs> fight. So now they're like kind of they're kind of wandering around the street around the apartment. One of them's like kicking a can. The other one starts banging the, the chain link fence with his bat, and he seems to be like he seems to be yelling something. Uh, you don't know if it's from a song. It sounds almost like maybe it's like from a metal song. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, "I am the night." Yeah. He's like hitting a, hitting a bat on a chain link fence. So. I think that was from the Batman Lego movie. Anyway, um, I'm gonna send a message to the Andersons and let them know um, what Rabbit found on the papers. Like again, this is all messaging, and just let them know one of the guys responsible is walking down the street right now, and that's that's all I'm gonna do. And nice. then Mako's gonna make his way inside without being seen by uh, the other guy. Just wait inside the foyer. Okay. Um, so Molly gets that and she says, Hey fam. And then she kind of calls them over and, uh, you know, they seem to be huddling you can't hear, really hear what they're saying to each other. And then you see them start rolling down the street, like twirling bats and crowbars as if like, you know, you gave them something to do. <laughs> so Nice idea. <laughs> Michael, you want to tell them about the car too? They could probably get rid of that. I mean, that car is going to have all sorts of, I'm going to take my uh, rings off all of a sudden, uh, all sorts of tracking. And I think you should just let rabbit take, take care of that. Um, yeah. So it is, uh, it's, it's, um, it is getting dark now, um, outside, um, being outside in the dark is probably not the, not the best idea. Most people have, unless you're like the, a wandering gang, like the, like the Andersons. Um, but it is starting to, the, the sun is starting to set. Um, even from here, even though you're not on the roof, you can you can tell that if this environment wasn't so dangerous and um, and life threatening, this would be a beautiful place. But um, unfortunately, um, night is setting. So, what, what are you guys planning on doing as the night is falling? We we still got this guy, right? Do we take? I think we take him inside. Yeah, he's uh he's ours now. We could make a trade. Yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. I know some people who might be interested in talking to him. I think uh, I think uh, Rex might be interested in knowing that someone was going to tear down his building too. Yeah, I think he'd be very interested to know. We say all of this really loud so he can hear it too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he says, uh, "Yeah, he says uh, your be- your your best <coughs> your best." Uh, your best bet is to cut a deal. <laughs> They're not gonna. They don't care about me. You know these corporations. Uh, <laughs> you think they're gonna send people in here to come after me? Well, how much money you got? Uh, you can have what I got. And he pulls out his pockets and he pulls out about uh, about approximately like two hundred euro. Um. Do I have to pay rent if they tear the building down? <laughs> yeah, somewhere else probably. <laughs> Does he have an eight? Like, can you hack people's agents? I don't really know. Uh, no. Okay. No, an agent thing. Uh, do, doing something with somebody's agent, it would be like if you got a hold of somebody's cell phone today, um, and say you got into their password or whatever and got into it. It'd be like anybody that has a basic tech skill, which you all have uh, tech on your sheets. That would be the skill you would use because it's just a technical item. It's not something up to the caliber of like what a what a net runner would interact with an agent. It's like very a common item. 
Okay. It's more like it's more like uh, think of like the what do they call it? Like, like jailbreaking a phone. That's about what the extent of what your tech ability is with an agent and their functionality. Right. I mean, so I'm just concerned that he's like messaging other people right now. Well, his agent, uh, he has a physical agent. If you want to take it from him, agents are about the the size of a uh, cigarette pack. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take that. Okay. John, when I was in the car, when I was jacked in the car, did I sense, like, was there anything other than just the controls for the car once I got past the passcodes? No, it, the car was basically, um, and not all cars are like this uh, that have or that can be operated by interface plugs, simply because they're, one, they're expensive, and two, if you don't have that ability, the car's useless to you. Okay. You know. And then what, was there any equipment that the, the surveyor or architect had uh, that he was carrying that was mechanical or anything? Um, no, just that just that he has mounted cameras. He very, he obviously has some type of cyberware connected with him, but that's not uncommon for a lot of people to have different versions of cyberware installed in their body to make their jobs easier, their lives easier. Um, he obviously has made enough money, or at least had some position where he can afford having uh, interface plugs to drive a a, a hand hands free car, basically. And he also has a, he can take pictures with a camera and have it neurally linked to himself. Yeah, so would we assume that the images that he took are already uploaded to whatever server he's linked to? Um, it's not a bad assumption, but you don't know. Oh, crap. I'm gonna look at you, rabbit. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'll go over to the guy. Um, uh, what happened to those pictures you took over there? Uh, I just used them for the, for the measurements, just to make sure I got the measurements right. Yeah, um, I got that, mate. Where are they? What do you mean, where are they? Are they uploaded to some server or what? Oh, well, yeah, you know the way it works. The agents, they just upload it to the company server. Right when I take them, there's a file. There's got to be a file there. Look, I'm, tell I'm telling you that they don't care about me, and um, they're going to have this building one way or another. I mean, you know these you, you world sat? They're, they're, a big, they're a big corporation. If they want, if they want it, they want it. They're going to take it. I mean, if you let me go, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, after this, they're not gonna, they're probably gonna fire me. Is Mac on your bio? Or? Yeah. Um, what do you think we should do with this, uh, this gunk? Um, well, uh, we, we need his agent for, sh for sure. I mean, you might be able to pull something off of that, but if things have been downloaded in the servers already, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a net runner. But um, my guess would be we need to forge whatever documents were sent to make it either a different building or find that they aren't going to condemn it. It might at least slow things down. I, oh. And I would say leave it up to Argus or Kay to decide what they're going to do with the, 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 the body. Oh, the body. All right, that's, so we're doing this. Then. That's laying out in the street. <laughs> oh, 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 that guy. That guy, <laughs> oh, that guy yeah. Wow, all right. <laughs> I was like, man, this escalated. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, I mean, is anybody going to come looking for the Militech body? Maybe the we leave them there as a warning. people demolish the building tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I imagine they'll have dumpsters. They can just sort of clean it up. We should probably decide if we're either... Um... Okay, let's do, do this out of character. We should probably decide if we're going to either... Well, we're definitely dumping the body. I don't know if we're going to do it with the guy that's alive still, but um, I think we need to either... Just thinking tech-wise, probably find a way to see if we can stop the upload well, or, or change it. I'm wondering if we need to go head over to WorldSat and basically right. destroy the files from there. Cool. Can we... I mean, can we do that? I can. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. Well, hopefully. I, I mean, love who the, knows what kind of black ice they have there. I love the confidence. <laughs> well, I mean, I can make an attempt, I guess. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm wondering, because this apartment obviously is worth preserving for us, but kind of like at what cost? Like, what, when are we going to cut our, our losses here? 
Well, well, well we've already we've already kind of cashed in once you hit hit that guy with a pipe. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm we fine. don't have the much options after fine. that. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think it. We, you took action. We need to take nothing but action, or we need to just leave. So where are you guys talking? Are you guys still in the stoop? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 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 Let's drag him inside. <laughs> So as you drag him inside, um, as basically um, not as far as you can see, but at least in the near distance in all directions, the street lights go out. Um, you also notice that each that on each of your um, each of your each of your agents, basically um, as you look at them, they they flash the symbol that says no um, that says no connection, and uh, you start hearing you start hearing screaming throughout the neighborhood, and also at this point it starts raining. Starts coming down as the as, n- as night is fully uh, kind of uh, kind of come come upon you, and so you can hear up and down this up and down the uh, street. People are like, what the heck is going on? And then they walk out, and you see people uh, look up up and down the street. That the fact that it's uh, that all the lights are out, that their agents aren't working. Um, somebody goes to the data pool that's thirty yards away and realizes that's not working either. And um, it's at that point that a panic starts to set in in the neighborhood. Um, you hear the the people the other on the other two floors start to close. Uh, they start to um, close their doors, peer out the window, see what's going on, and you get a sense that everyone's basically about to start hiding behind the, uh, hiding behind their doors. Because being in this part of the part of the city, and now the lights are going out, and they have no agent connection, it'd be like today if you lost connection to your cell phone. You know, you'd be like, what's going? You know, it would be that little bit of a panic would set in. Um, at that uh, at, at um, at that point, what do you guys want to do? Um, well, so I have my vehicle. I'm wondering at this point, like getting mobile seems to be like kind of priority one. I don't know. What are you guys thinking? What do we do with this guy? I'm telling you, man, they're they're coming. They're going to destroy this apartment, and you along with it. Well, let me go. I mean, what am I going to do? You already know they're coming. Probably already coming already. You're famous enough that you you showed up on our searches. We knew what you were doing before we even walked out there. I, I believe you've probably expedited the process. Oh shit, I'm going upstairs to get my stuff. Mako just heads upstairs instantly. <clears throat> I'm gonna hand Argus one of my nice new very heavy pistols. <laughs> Thank you. I probably white rabbit would probably go upstairs too and grab all the stuff. I'm not sure what else to do. That's probably Okay. What about <laughs> uh, What about K and Argus? I think we gotta Tie up a loose end here. What's that mean? Um, I think we got to take care of the architect. We got him what we can, and he's only a liability at this point. Are you taking him inside, or are you doing that this uh, this business on the street? Oh my gosh! No, right right inside. I mean, okay. they're going to destroy the building anyways. Argus, you don't want to take him with us? I. He seems like he's only going to be a liability. Can he hear us talking about him like this? Oh yeah, oh he totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's giving you his pleas. Like, Let me go. There's nothing else I can do. Okay, good. They're probably coming right now. I mean, what you got everything. You got my 200 euro. Marco's gonna come back downstairs. See the architect. Um, we uh yeah, uh, we should do something. Just uh, let them let him go or something. Uh, you said you had a car. Is it where's the other car? Is the other car accessible to us still? It's down the street. It's uh, after um, after White Rabbit let it go. You didn't see what happened to it. Most likely, it probably crashed or rolled to a stop. Okay, um, oh. Mako actually does a lot of stuff with cars, so he is going to uh, clap Argus on the back and say, "Good idea with the car," and he's going to go try to find the other car. Okay. And cool. use that as like a second base if we're going to go and go mobile. <laughs> okay. Um, at that moment. Um, since Argus and Kay are still outside, uh, Molly comes rolling back, but she's one with one less member. 
Mm. And she says, uh, she says they got, they got, they got Polly, and you can tell that she's already beaten up, and so are um, a couple of her. Uh, one of her, one of her um, gang members has a gunshot wound in his shoulder, and they don't have much armor on to speak of. And they go, um, and they say, uh, they're, they're coming, they're coming. And they just huddle inside the door, and they, they, they basically say something to the effect of, like, up to the apartment. You know, and they start climbing the stairs to try to grab any gear that they can. Um, a helicopter starts flying up above you, and um, Night Rib- I mean, not White, <laughs> White Rabbit. <laughs> I know it's so hard to find you guys for a year playing another campaign. Right. White Rabbit and... Um, why well, I'd want to say I'd want to say Michael Hurd says because you did go upstairs to get your stuff first before you're thinking about the car that you Correct. heard basically some boots land on the ceiling. Oh, oh shit! So I don't know if that changes okay. what you want to do about the car, um, but um, you hear that helicopter and then the helicopter flies off. But there are some boots that landed on the ceiling, um, and that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh man. And how many Bye. clips did I get for that assault rifle? <laughs> <laughs> you got what's uh, with the one that he dropped. You got what was in it. So, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, next time, he didn't. But... He didn't shoot it. So yeah, no. I added it to my inventory. So okay. we're good. All right. But thanks, guys, for playing. Um, and the next time we play, we will finish the uh, this scenario. And I imagine we'll actually get into the next one because uh, assuming cool. who lives, you're going to need some money pretty soon because rent's going to be due in a couple weeks. <laughs> And uh, we'll talk about uh, assuming you live. Uh, what's going to happen next time? What's going to happen next time? We'll see uh, what kind of jobs you find to find some money. So, but thanks for playing, cool. and thank you, everyone. That was fun. That was very fun. Good stuff. All right, I'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks, Jonathan. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you next time.